Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nisa Nice. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video, as the title says below, is going to be my December wrap-up, and I pretty much had a good reading month. Pretty much, pretty well. Yeah, pretty much had a good reading month. Hopefully that made sense. It didn't make sense as I said it out loud, but whatever. Um, But yeah, we're going to dive in. So... This is strictly going to be my wrap-up. I'm going to do my TBR in a separate video. Um, I said for 2020 that I wanted to start separating my TBR videos as well as my wrap-ups just because they can be pretty long. So this is strictly going to be all the books that I read in December, okay? All right. So we're going to start off with the two nonfiction books that I read. So the first one is She Prays by Debbie Lindo. It's a 31-day journey to confident conversations with God, and I enjoyed this. Um, it was an okay read. I'm gonna go with a 4.5 star rating, 4 star, I'm still debating. But, um, I enjoyed it. There were some pages, I don't know if you guys can see that, I, like, folded back because they, like, kind of sparked an interest in me writing a sermon on them. So, yeah, but overall, it was pretty good, pretty relatable. And I didn't fully, like, color annotate, if that makes sense. Like, the beginning pages, I did. So, I need to go back through this book, obviously, and re-annotate. But, um, I did write a lot in this book. <laughs> Like, I was, it was really relatable. Or did I give it a five stars? Honestly, I can't remember. But I thought this was a really good read. Um, I think it's great. Prayer-wise, I'm not really sure, but it is a good book. Um, but I didn't really feel like it was prompting me to really pray a lot. But um, maybe that's why I'm going to give it a four stars. Because I don't feel like it really prompted me to pray. But it was still a good book and still relatable. But um, I did enjoy this. And we had that. The last nonfiction book that I read was Hooper's Evangelist and Minister's Handbook by Deborah C. Hooper. Five stars. I mean, it should be a four star, but I'm saying five star. I would personally give it a four star only because a lot of the stuff I already knew from my previous ministry as well as the ministry that I'm at now because my leaders are very adamant about me knowing um, what it is with being a minister and evangelist. But I'm saying five stars because this really has a lot of helpful information that talks about the business side and the personal side and your health and your mental state and things like that. So this was really, really good. Even if you're not an evangelist um, or not a minister, I think it'd still be a great book to have because it talks about speaking engagements and writing sermons and what it entails and being a minister. So if you're interested in being a minister for the word of God, for Christ, if you're interested in being an evangelist or anything along those lines within leadership as far as ministry, I think this would be a great book to get. Um, it also goes into detail about your wardrobe and traveling and things like that. So um, it was pretty much a basic read for me about a four star rating, but I'm going to say five star because I do think this is one that a lot of people should have. So we have that. All right. So right now we're going to talk about the three books that I read that don't come out until February 2020, but I read them and I loved them. So we're going to talk about those books. Okay. So the first one we'll talk about is one that I actually have like a physical arc of right now, and that is going to be Isaiah's Legacy. I did read the E arc, so that's why this is not tabbed up. Um, I read it electronically through NetGalley, and oh my god, five stars. <laughs> this gutted me, you guys. I thought King Hezekiah made me cry in Isaiah's Daughter, but oh my god. <laughs> This gutted me. I'm going to have a book look discussion coming on this because my reading blog will be coming February 18th when this is released. But <sighs> King Manasseh, King Hezekiah, Hepziva, Isaiah, oh my God, what happened to Isaiah gutted me. Oh, I wanted to cry. Then she also brings into the book um, another one of the prophets. I think it's Amos she brings into the story. I can't remember. Again, like I said, I didn't read the physical arc. I read the E arc, so it's in my highlights on Kindle. But um, I believe she brings in Amos when he's like a young boy before he becomes a prophet. So this this was good. And the little girl in this shoelay who's like the love interest pissed me off. It talks about dark magic. There's lots of killing. So if you are not into killing and the real grittiness of the Bible, don't, don't, don't read this. I will say, read Isaiah's Daughter first before reading this because... This, even though this is book three in her Prophets and Kings series, which the first book is Isaiah's Daughter and then A Fire and Lions, Isaiah's Daughter focuses on the prophet Isaiah Hepziva as well as um, King Hezekiah. Then you have A Fire and Lions, which talks about Daniel. And then after that, you have this one, which is um, Isaiah's Legacy, which is the sequel to Isaiah's Daughter, but the third book in the series, which can sound confusing, but I definitely recommend if you want to get the full impact of this book read Isaiah's daughter five, five stars just 
I'm not gonna talk too long. Just five stars. Five. Five. Okay. Five. And this was one of my most anticipated reads for 2020, <laughs> biblical Christian fiction wise. Like, there we go. Next book we have is <laughs> Daughter of Rome by Miss Tessa Abshaw. Now, this might sound strange. Now, it's a five star read for me. Okay. Five star. But I gave it a 4.75 star rating in my review only because I think what it is is when I read the book I was really I hyped it up so much and was super excited and had super high expectations because I love Miss Tessa Abshaw I've given literally six of her books a five star and one a four star so I mean definitely you would have high expectations but as I was reading the book um it felt like her writing style changed sorry I thought something was on my wall it felt like her writing style changed um and i wasn't the only one a lot of other people that got copies for the launch team said the same thing it felt like her writing style changed and it took me a minute and in my reading vlog which i'm going to be posting my reading vlog on february 4th that's tuesday so you'll see that um of me reading the book but even in my reading vlog you can you'll notice that i kind of zone in and out uh, from reading because it kind of it i don't know it's it was something with the writing style that kind of like pulled me out, but it was a really great book. So I had to give it a 4.75 star rating, even though it's really five stars, but that's just me. But I'm going to reread the book when my physical copy comes because I feel like if I had a physical copy, it would be better. But um, we have that. So moving on, we then have a fantasy, Cry of the Raven by Morgan L. Bussey, the third and final book in the Ravenwood saga. Five stars. Five stars all the way. This is yet again another one of my most anticipated reads outside of Daughter of Rome and Isaiah's Legacy. This also comes out on the 4th of February, the same day as Daughter of Rome. You guys, this book made me so emotional because people die. The romance is built. The mother, she irritates me. There are babies being born. There is magic being used. And I freaking loved it. It was so good, guys. I'm sorry. I'm, like, gushing. Like, I'm going to be so sad when I get my physical book because that means it's over. Like, and I I love Grand Lord Damien. I love Grand Lady Celine. I love the magic system. I love the faith aspects. I love the use of scripture. I love the use of um, faith and how God is interwoven into the fantasy world and just the, the bonds. And sorry again if you guys hear my family. They're loud. I apologize, but I wanted to record this video because I'm a little behind on recording videos, but um, I, I loved it. One of my top books for 2020. So as you guys can see, I already read my three most anticipated reads for Christian biblical fiction already. Like there's nothing else. I'm not, well, no, there's a few other books that I really want, like from Joe Eileen. I think Angela Hunt's working on a new series and stuff like that. Like there are other books out there, especially from Kind of Link Cassette. I am waiting on her book and I'm also part of her launch team. So I cannot wait to gush about that book, but her book doesn't come out until March, I think. So I have time, but yes those three were yeah so moving on to the physical books that i own okay these are all physical books yes okay so starting off with redeeming love by francine rivers we finished this book for um the doi book club and five stars again like i finally got a chance to reread it and tab it up in five stars i love sarah sarah was that her real name i, I don't know why i keep thinking sarah but i think her name was sarah um aka angel michael jose is everything and more he is like phenomenal to me if you don't know what this is this is historical fiction um retelling of the story of the prophet hosea and gomer if you don't know who they are read the book of hosea and it's basically hosea was a prophet that god told to marry a prostitute and she kept running away from him she kept running away from love and the way that francie rivers wrote this book was so epic like there are no words to describe how i feel about this book and it's so real and it's so raw and it's relatable and it's it's powerful i highly if you're not into biblical fiction but you want to get into christian fiction start off with this it this will gut you like <sighs> trigger warnings it does talk about sex there is abuse in this um uh, when i say sex meaning rape <laughs> sorry it does deal with rape it does talk about um physical abuse emotional abuse mental abuse um and self-worth i i adore this so five stars again another five star read this is will forever be a five star read for me forever and i'll probably reread this book every year because it is so just it's a hefty one it's a tome almost a tome almost over 500 pages but um it's it's beautifully written beautifully written and i highly recommend it so we have this book here 
Okay, then we have a book that I buddy read with my sister Stephanie over at Quilts and Beauty and Books, and that's gonna be Spice Kings by um <laughs> the Spice Kings, excuse me, by Elizabeth Camden. This is the first book in Hope and Glory, and I gave this four point five star rating. This is historical fiction. It was really good. Um, this was set back in oh my god, what's the time area? 1900s maybe that's why i enjoyed it because it was 1900s why 1900s washington dc it deals with the smithsonian and um the main character gray delacrosse is a just who he is one heck of a man he is very blunt and blatant about his emotions and how he feels about the female character what is her name annabelle what, what's up with all these annabelles and arabelles and the book that i'm i'm gonna be reading in January, no, the book that I'm reading this month, excuse me, it's January. My brain is all over the place. The book that I'm reading this month, the one I'm reading right now, has a female character named Arabelle. So, this one, this her name is Annabelle. Her, her and Gray just had such an interesting relationship, and I, I really loved Gray a lot. Annabelle kind of pissed me off, <laughs> and um, Gray's sister Charlotte pissed me off as well. Even his brother pisses me off because there's something that goes on with his brother that i need I, I need answers too so hopefully the second book when it comes out it comes out this year 2020 it reveals some things about his brother because i i'm still pissed off with his brother like too many secrets charlotte will be the main character in the second book so it focuses on his sister um and she works in the white house with the president's wife if i'm not mistaken but um the spice king i really did enjoy this it was fun it was comical the romance was adorable and 4.5 star rating this really shocked me a lot so we have this. Then we have a book that I reread, obviously, to do the um, book look tutorial videos, which hopefully that video will be coming the end of the month. Fingers crossed since I read it, right? Um, but that's Delilah by Angela Hunt. This is a book that I said I wanted to start off with for my book to look makeup tutorials. What you can expect is a purple eyeshadow with some green and some browns. I don't know what I'm crafting yet because I don't know, but it will be done. So it's coming soon. But I reread this book for that video. I tabbed it up as well. For a star read, again, I enjoyed it. Delilah is a very great, interesting character. But there's something about the writing in this book that just doesn't do it for me. And this happened with Esther from her as well. I gave that a four star rating. It's good, but it's not gripping, which is why I think I gave it four stars. But I love Delilah. Um, she has her moments that piss me off, especially when she betrayed Samson. Like, And Samson was so annoying. Oh my god, I hate it it's like yo samson was such a douchebag and the way he tried to flaunt his power and his strength was annoying um but i enjoyed this i i live for this cover though like all the covers of the series are amazing but i live for this cover you got a brown skin girl with some pretty i live okay i live for it so four stars the next book was probably my most disappointing um it got a 3.5 star rating which isn't too bad but I didn't have high hopes going into this, but I do want to continue on and read the sequel when it comes out. But um, it's going to be Seconds to Live by Susan Sleeman. This is the first book in the Homeland Heroes. Book 2 cover is so pretty. It's a blue color. It's so, like, pretty. But this one follows... What are their names? See, I'm bad at remembering characters' names as well when the story does not grip me. This one deals with Sean and... Um, Sean is an FBI agent and Marshall Taylor Mills. Now, Taylor pissed me off. She was so damn annoying. She was whiny. I didn't like her. She pissed. <laughs> That's honestly, if it wasn't for her being whiny, it would have gotten a four star. Let me say that. But she whined. She complained. She dragged things out too much for me. She irritated me. And um, she did this woe is me crap too much. Now, Noah, is his name Noah? No, his name is Sean. You see? Terrible. Sean was a really guy, great guy. I really enjoyed him. And the thing about it is, Sean and Taylor knew each other via the internet so like they were talking to each other via the internet for a while but they had to actually meet in person for a case that he needed her help with because the person he needed to work with was one a, a witness that she was protecting so i liked that um sean was very adamant about getting to know taylor but taylor just was pissing me off like she she was making me mad so yeah um and i don't think i annotated this book at all yeah i didn't annotate like whatsoever but all my links to reviews will be down below for good read, so you can see all the reviews that I have. But, um, yeah, I didn't annotate this book at all. It just, it didn't do much for me. Am I gonna keep it? Yes, because, um, it's a part of the romantic suspense. I'm gonna try to give it another go once the sequel comes out. But Taylor pissed me off, so it got a 3.5 star rating. The next book I read is The Shaft by Scott B. Delaney. I gave this book four stars, and this actually surprised me a lot. This is suspense, supernatural thriller, 
it was it was it was good okay it was good Re watch my reading vlog if you haven't seen that cookie i'm just gonna go watch that but um this one oh my god what is this guy's name i cannot remember andrew and okay this book was told in a very interesting <laughs> manner because there are different povs so you have andrew morrison who is like the main character and then you have like the serial killer guy but then you have the angels that have their sort of like plot line and then you have the guys that work with the serial killer sniper dude it was interesting i enjoyed it it took me for a toll like a, a ride did i annotate in this i don't think i annotated enough but i did annotate some things if i can find anything no i'm not finding anything right now yeah i think what it was is i started out annotating but i didn't finish annotating but um i did enjoy this book if you guys want to watch like my set my reading block like the honest screen but this was really good i thought andrew was an interesting character i loved i think for me my favorite characters were the angels <laughs> downright they were freaking epic they did make me mad because it was just like certain scenes i feel like they should have showed up earlier to help out but i also understood it at the same time so i did enjoy that um but we have this the last two books were the last two books that I requested from Ambassador International that I had to read and review. So we have To Comfort a King by Debbie Gilliland. This book, I'm trying to remember, what did I give this? I gave this a 3.75 star rating. Um, so this talks about a B-shag um, who was the last sort of wife of King David. She's a young lady that they found, the virgin that they found to keep him warm in his last days because he couldn't stay warm. And... 3.75 star rating. I enjoyed it, but I feel like it was short. Maybe that. I think that's what it was. It was really short. Um, I did love King David in this. King David and Queen Bathsheba were amazing in this. I feel like Solomon should have had more of a play in this book. Um, I I can't stand King David's other son. I do not... Adonijah, I, whatever his name is, it's on the screen. I couldn't stand him when I actually studied David with BSF, and I just didn't stand him even more in this book. It pissed me off like so much. But um, I felt like more should have been included. In this. It should have been a little bit bigger. Um, it was good, but it also didn't grip me. So that's why I did also think Abishag was a slightly annoying. I don't know what it is with these female characters slightly getting on my nerve. But, um, my full review, like I said, link down below, but we have that. The last one is going to be from Judy Dutram. This one is called Blood Moon Redemption. This one is a sci-fi futuristic kind of thing told in dual, per, dual um, timelines. It takes place starting back in 1493, then it goes to 1949, then it goes to 1967 to present time from Israel to Chicago. And this shocked me, you guys. Not going to lie. The first few chapters, I was like, I'm over it. I'm going to DNF. And a DNF meaning, it means that the book bored you so much that you don't even want to waste your time reading it. I honestly was going to DNF this book. But I gave this book a four-star rating. It was really good, um, shockingly. Um, Tassie is her name. And <laughs> first of all, her name. She's named after a tassel. Literally, like a literal tassel is what she's named after. And Tassie is not a believer, but her family comes from a lineage of believers um, back in that time. So she has this boyfriend. What is his name? Is it Omar? I need to remember this guy's name. Yeah, Omar. I don't know why that was an easy name to remember, but Omar. So Tassie and her family are Jews. Um, Omar is Muslim. And she doesn't proclaim to be a Jew. She doesn't proclaim to believe in Jesus Christ, okay? So Tassie has been dealing with um, like identity issues as far as like her beliefs. And the guy that she is with is a Muslim. And he secretly does things that pisses me off. Now, there, <laughs> there is an angel that comes into the story. And his name is Hector. Is it Hector? I think it's Hector. Um, I feel like his name is Hector. Can't really find his name at the moment. Um... Yes, his name is Hector. And the thing about Hector is he just pops up at Tassie's job and starts talking about her mother. Her mother dreamt about Hector and her father also dreamt about Hector. But someone else also knew about Hector. It was weird. It was good. I enjoyed it. I definitely would read more from this author because this book really just gripped me. Like I said, the first few chapters, I was really about to just DNF this book, but I pushed through it because I requested it for review and I didn't want to DNF it. I don't like DNF in books, but um, I, I like pushing through because maybe it'll get better, you know? 
this one surprised me. I was flying through this, like flying through it once I got further in and um, it was so good. And I love the ending because there's a scene where Omar meets, he kind of has like a Paul moment, okay? Um, and what I mean by that is that Omar is Muslim, so he's all about killing Jews and all that stuff, right? And Paul was killing the Jews in his, the beginning. And then he had the moment where he was blinded on the road and met Jesus and things like that. And this sort of happens with Omar, where he has a situation where he's badly hurt and he goes into this like dream realm or spiritual realm where he meets Jesus and Jesus and him are talking and he just refuses to acknowledge Jesus his fa his grandfather dies and he his grandfather comes into the spiritual realm and is explaining to him that he needs to follow Jesus because they were following something out and um it i can't explain it so just read my review okay link down below it was really good but I had a pretty darn good reading month, okay? Let me just open back to my notes, but, um, where is it? Okay, so I had three five-star rate. Well, I had four five-star ratings, but I'm saying three because I'm saying Tessa Afterwards. And so we're going to say I have one, two, th uh, four five-star ratings. I had three four-stars. I had one 4.5, I had a 3.5, and a 3.75. So nothing below a 3.5, which is pretty good. Um, quite a few five star ratings and some good four stars on a 4.75, a 4.5, excuse me. So I thought my December month was pretty good. I did no studying for the month of December, like none. So don't, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. December, there was no studying done. Okay. Um, we're going to hope January is a little better, but yeah, that is it for this video. If you guys have read any of these books or reviewed any of these books or whatever the case may be, let me know. Um, and if you want to see like a specific book review on any of these books, let me know. If you are not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, click the bell to stay notified and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.